After one of the previous banking videos, I got a comment, if everyone puts gold in the banks, what can they use to transact for to buy food or to, to pay for services, etc.? And that is an excellent segue into the notion of a banknote. Banknote. You've probably heard the word before, maybe in in some you know, Charles Dickens novel or, any, or something. But what we're going to find out in this video is actually a much more familiar concept than you ever realized. And you probably have some of these banknotes in your wallet as we speak. So let's go back to our example. I have the Bank of Sal. I use 100 gold pieces. That's my equity. Let me draw that. My equity, I have 100 gold pieces. And I use that to build a building. So the 100 gold pieces actually go to the builders, and they're from out of town, so they're not going to deposit it back with me. So that's my building. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little picture of a building. And then all of the villagers in my city, they come in and deposit their gold with me, because my building it looks very solid and safe. It's safer than their mattresses. So they then deposit 1,000 gold pieces with me. 1,000 gold pieces. So on the liability side of my balance sheet, I could say, uh, oh, 1,000 gold pieces. Oh, 1,000 gold. And then on my asset side, I actually get the gold pieces. I should have done that in yellow. But So on my asset side of the balance sheet, which is strangely tilting to the left, on the asset side, I actually have the 1,000 gold pieces. Thousand gold pieces. So there's actually sitting in my vaults. Now the question was if 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 all of the villagers put all of their gold into my vaults, what can they use uh, to transact every day? The way I drew it right now, these are my let me this is, this side is my assets, and these are my liabilities. Right, I owe them a thousand gold pieces that they can come and get any, at any moment. And you know this, this could kind of be viewed as a checking deposit. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go into that in a second. I'll probably go into that in the next video. But if all of their 1,000 gold pieces are, are sitting right here on the asset side of, or at least in my vault, what can they use to transact? Well, the solution is I say, hey, you know, uh, instead of taking some of your gold out and using that as essentially money, why don't I give you a note? A note that says you put x amount of gold into my vault. So for example, for each one gold piece, let me draw that. For each one gold piece, I will issue a banknote. So let's say I'll say one gold piece banknote outstanding. Banknote outstanding. I know you can't read that, but that says one gold piece banknote outstanding, and then I hand you a slip of paper. And that slip of paper, and this might start to look a little familiar to you, say it's, it looks about this shape. The slip of paper is that shape. It has a nice picture of, of Sal in the middle, because it's the bank of Sal. And it is denominated as one gold piece. One gold piece. One gold piece. And now you gave me that gold piece, and you get this green piece of paper that it's, that only I can print, and and no one else has the sophistication to do something this fancy. You know, maybe I use some colors here, and I, you know, I sign it Sal, and I do all sorts of stuff that makes it really hard to forge, so that no one else can, you know, no one else can can. I put some holograms on it. Who knows what I do to it? But no one else can forge it. So this is essentially a piece of paper that I hand you that says. You know what? Anyone who holds this piece of paper can go back to the Bank of Sal and get back a gold piece. Then, since everyone in the village, they trust that the Bank of Sal will always be willing to exchange one of these slips of paper to, for a gold piece, instead of using a gold piece to buy something, why don't you just use this slip of paper? And even more, instead, you know, for one gold pieces, you know, you don't want to just have a stack of one gold piece pieces of paper around. Maybe if you gave me five gold pieces, I'll do that in a, another color. So maybe if you gave me five gold pieces, that that rectangle is much larger than it should be relative to a thousand, but I think you get the point. Then I'll do, I'll have a liability here that says five gold pieces banknote outstanding. I'll call it B note outstanding. And I'll issue A. I think you have guessed it. Maybe I'll do it in a different color to show you that the 
these banknotes can come in different colors. But I'll, once again, I'll put a famous person there, maybe, and I'll make it really hard to forge. And I'll put holograms on it. But it'll be denominated as a five gold piece banknote. And now, if you were one of the villagers, you gave me your gold pieces. Now, not only is your gold safe, you have these pieces of paper that are very hard to forge. And that's, that's a key issue there, because if they were easy to forge, then someone maybe completely unaffiliated with this trustworthy bank, completely unaffiliated with Sal, could go out and, and print these things. So you don't want that to happen. So we're assuming that you can't forge this thing. And now, not only is your gold safe, but you have something that you can transact with that's frankly a lot easier than gold. I mean, I could even have a denomination that's, you know, I could, it could be a 500 gold piece. So if someone gave me 500 gold pieces, I could give a you know, 500 gold piece banknote out. That would be my liability, right? Because I know that at some point, someone might give me back that 500 gold piece banknote, and I'll have to give them 500 pieces of gold. So that's why it's a liability. And maybe that piece of currency is orange. So it's 500. 500, 500. I think you get the idea. And now this is super useful. Now my bank, you know, we've we've done all of the other things: how the bank increases the money supply and fractional lending, and how the money supply adjusts for the total production and wealth creation in the economy. But now that we we found another useful thing that a bank can do, is that besides securing your gold, it's actually providing a a unit of exchange that's frankly a lot easier to deal with. Then gold. And can you imagine lugging around and counting and verifying 500 gold pieces every time you had to spend it? Or you know, yeah, everyone would have to have scales, etc. Now people can just count there, and as you see, this is money or this is cash, and and it it, it, it you might be experiencing some form of dissonance in your head, you because right when I drew that, you're like, wait, Sal, that looks a lot like a dollar bill, and that's true because a dollar bill is a Federal Reserve. Banknote. It is a banknote from the U.S. Fed. There was a time, and this was a time before uh, central banks, and especially uh, if you think about colonial times, you had banks all over the the I guess the colonies, and they would actually issue their own banknotes. So you didn't have one uniform currency. So one banknote might look like that and have Bank of Sal. Another banknote might have Bank of um, I don't know, a bank of George Bush or something. And, and, and people would kind of have to have you know, exchanges between them to, to realize which banks are good for what. Now we're not as familiar with the term banknote because we only see one type, or at least one type per country. We only see banknotes from one bank, or at least one bank has the right to issue them within the United States, and that's the Federal Reserve Bank. And it's not backed by gold. It's actually backed by U.S. Treasuries. And I'll go into that uh, a little later on. Actually, that's a, that's a whole fascinating um, realm of thought. But I just wanted to hit this point home, that, all you had to, that, that this bank actually has this other service of issuing these banknotes that are different than the checking deposits, which I will cover in the next video. And then I will use both of those concepts to to, I guess, redo that, that lending that we did with the irrigation ditches and the factory to show you that the gold actually never, never even has to leave the bank. The gold just sits in the bank the whole time, and the bank can just use its banknotes and checks to actually conduct all of the transactions. See